Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create some shadowing for your lettering work which will ultimately make it stand out more and can give it a bit more character. So once you have your lettering work complete and you want to add some shadowing to it then you will need to have some overlaps, for example this letter A that I've got at the top here. You can see how this line overlaps the other two lines in the letter A of course. So here you can see there's a complete cut in the letter and then here there's a bit of a split. So this could, you, you, there's two options that you have with this, you can either do a complete split like this or you could keep the shape filled in and just have it a darker colour so it actually looks like a real shadow rather than basically a negative shadow where it's cut out. Same goes with the split, you could just add a colour rather than making a cut out and I'll show you how to do both of these. So that's the, that's how it's going to look when we're finished and this is the version that we're going to work on. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the letter A, which is two, two completely separate objects. The uh, bar that goes through and then the actual A itself. So ideally it's better if you do have two separate shapes, but you can do this if it's just one shape. So say if this was merged, you could still do it like that. It's just a bit easier if you have it two separate shapes. So what you'll see a lot of people doing is basically just clicking there, clicking there, clicking back out. You just make that white so you can see what I mean. And that's how they'd have it, like that. And while it does work, it doesn't particularly look very pleasing. As you can see, it's very sharp and not very smooth, like this, for example. So I'm just gonna delete that and show you how I do it. And something else you need to keep in mind as well is the direction. So let me just show you what I mean. See how this part here is closer and then it goes further away down here. That's because that's coming out, so the shadow would be cast lower on this side, if that makes sense. It's kind of something that you have to pick up and learn, but you'll you'll get you'll if you keep doing it, you'll eventually understand how it works. So, oops. So I'll just show you how I would do it now. And like I said, now that these are two completely separate objects, I don't have to I don't have to worry about trying to get this to match that absolutely perfectly. Whereas if it was one big shape then you'd want to get this to match as well as you could. So just for the sake of this, I'm going to pretend that these are merged and it's one big shape, just because I know a lot of you probably will have um, just one shape rather than two separate shapes. So I'm just going to click there and then just make it a stroke. And what you want to do from here, rather than just clicking into the shape like this in a straight line, what you're going to do is click on the side of the path. Let me just click here. And of course, like I said before, it's going to be higher up over here and lower down over here. So I'm just going to click on the path and drag up. Make sure it'll lock to the path as well. So you drag up and now as you can see it curves when you come in. So then I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And then on this side, I'm just going to do the exact same thing again. Follow the path down so it, see how it locks to it there. Keep pulling down and let go. And then reattach and finish the path. And I'm just going to fill this to white so you can get an idea of how it will look once we've actually cut it out. So, what I mean by it being two different shapes is if if this is underneath, like for example, we put that underneath, we just add another path to it so I can adjust it to show you. So, now if I move this up here, you can see it overlaps, but if I drag this, if I put this layer behind, because this is on top, this is in the middle, and this is at the bottom, I don't have to worry about getting this alignment perfect, if you see what I mean. But, for, like I said, for the sake of this, I'm just gonna try and get it as accurate as I can just to show you, because I know a lot of you will just have it as one big shape. I hope, I'm hoping this is making a, a bit of sense to you. And if you, see, if you zoom in and you see anything like, oops, if you see anything like this, where you've not completely gone over it, then you'll wanna adjust the anchor points. So let me get rid of that extra one that I added in. So you'll want to adjust these. So I'm just going to drag this up a little bit. Right, and then I'm just going to check the other side. Right, um, I think that, yeah, that covers it. Right, so what you're going to do from here is select this and select this. So now you've got the two shapes selected. I'm just going to go to the Shape Builder tool on the left, or Shift M. And I'm going to hold Alt and click on the two parts that are excess outside of the shape. 
and then click on the selection tool and just deselect and now as you can see you've got this just this shape by itself and it's overlapping a little bit here so I'm just gonna click this Come on. there we go right okay so now we've got the shape and well I've lost my train of thought <laughs> Um, yeah, you can either cut this out, so you basically just got a complete cut in the letter, or you can make this a colour, so I'm just going to make this a darker blue just to give you an example of what you can do with it. So I'll just make it a darker blue, a bit darker than that. And now you can see the difference between the two different kind of shadows, so you can either have a complete cut like this, or you can just have a dark shadow. And I've just noticed that this needs to be higher up so it's smaller yeah that's probably a bit better but it takes a bit of um, trial and error to get it perfectly right that looks a bit better right so that's much neater and much better and from here if you wanted a complete cut then all you'd have to do is select them both come to the shape builder tool again hold alt and cut out that middle part and then Oops, and that's because I adjusted it. I just delete that. That's cool. So yeah, make sure you get it right first time rather than doing what I just did by adjusting it. It just makes life a nightmare. Right, so that's back to normal. So now as you can see, these two are pretty much the exact same now. So that's how you achieve that look. Let me just undo that so we get the coloured version back. There we go. And now I'm just going to show you how to do the split, which is basically just the exact same thing. So I'm just going to click and drag, making sure I'm following the path. I'm just going to come down to about here. You don't have to follow this perfectly if you don't want. You can kind of create your own shape. So once you've created this path, you're going to click on the anchor, which will delete the anchor arm that you just had. And then you're going to hold Alt to click bring out a new one. And you're just going to bring this in sort of a rough direction. So like there. And then again, you're going to click onto this path and you're going to click and drag and make sure you follow it so you get that nice curve. Click off, finish the path, and again highlight them both, and then come to the Shape Builder tool holding Alt, delete that, and now you can see you have both the shadows. And if you're going to do something like this where you're using two different kinds of shadows to achieve this sort of overlay effect, you want to make sure that the shadows kind of work. So in theory down here the shadow would be much smaller than over here, so what I'd have to do is make this a bit smaller so it makes sense and now that I've adjusted it you can see if I highlight them both it, st it started to overlap again a bit so I'm just going to go to the shape builder holding alt and delete that little excess part there and now as you can see it's like the shadows gradually getting bigger as it goes over so now it makes more sense like this for example so that's how I add um, shadows to my lettering work both coloured shadows and negative shadows um, and as you can see, it does create um, a very nice effect and it does make your lettering work stand out much more than obviously just a flat piece of type. So I'm trying to think of different sort of tutorials that I can create for you guys, just of like additional things to add to your lettering work to make them stand out a bit more. And this was one of the things that I've been wanting to get across for a while. So let me know what you think of these tutorials. And if you, if you see anything else in my lettering work that I do that you'd want to know how to do, um, just leave a comment down below and I'll try and get around to doing that as soon as. Thanks for watching guys.